Hi, Vincent Hall photographers. Whether or not you're taking pictures for the photo class or just enjoying the videos for fun and to learn something new about photography, this week's lesson will benefit you both. We're going to deal with a basic principle of photography called the rule of thirds. And while that might be pretty easy to understand when we draw it out on a line, how it works in art is something else altogether. It's always helpful to have a theme when you're taking pictures for an assignment like this. So I thought this week's theme could be something called simple pleasures. Even though we might not be able to get out and do much in the way of like travel photography or things like that, there's everyday things we have in our lives that bring us joy. From that warm cup of coffee in the morning, if you like coffee, to maybe looking at beautiful photos of times that you've spent with family and friends, to maybe just a serendipitous walk that you come across a bird or a plant that might be interesting to photograph as well. But how do you frame it? Or if you don't have time to figure out the rule of thirds when you're taking the picture, because let's face it, birds don't necessarily follow our ideas of what they should do when we wanna take a picture of a living animal, we can always crop it in Photoshop. So today's video is going to also show you some Photoshop work on my computer and how to get the best crop so that your photograph has a nice rule of thirds. So think about what you might wanna do. We're also giving our photography class folks a chance to catch up a little bit since last week's episode on north, south, east, west directional lighting did not produce any sunshine the whole last week until today. So while they get a chance to catch up and then share some of their work with you, this might be a fun exercise for everyone to try. A simple pleasure might be being outdoors. You can hear my birds in the background chirping. Well, they're not my birds, but the neighborhood birds. <laughs> anyway, maybe looking at an herb garden or some little plant growth as you're just taking a walk. Once you have your, if you're using a phone, you can see the rule of thirds because they're going to have that grid built right in. And I can move around until I find just the perfect angle for my photo. I have not found it yet, but maybe right here, I would take a picture that works. Maybe the simple pleasure is just enjoying the beauty of a sunny, warm day and the verdant greens that late spring brings to us. Even taking a picture of foliage this large using the shadows as negative space will give me just that place that I want to use my rule of thirds to take a picture. So it's either going to be two thirds object and one third negative space like sky or shadow or the opposite, one third object and two thirds negative space. So as I look around at this, I'm thinking maybe I want to get some breathing room here for the tree. Maybe I'll go right about here and I would take my picture. This is two thirds object, one third negative space. The natural light in your house can also work wonders on getting an interesting video. I have these hydrangeas and I'm just trying to play around with where I want the light source to be and find a good angle. I might eventually in Photoshop get rid of some of the other things on the table, but the grid of the window behind them or rather the um, French doors actually helps me frame the object and get a sense of what my rule of thirds can be. So using window frames or other naturally found lines can help you frame your object. I think I'll go right in here and that would be my Just point. taking a walk around your neighborhood might find some interesting buildings. In this case, I'm using this fence as the rule of thirds to help me frame the picture. You might hear some car noises because I'm out on Main Street in Fairfax, but I can look around at this old building and try to come up with some places I might think would work as a picture, maybe here too. I'm always a fan of a picket fence. So if I back up a little bit, I might even get more. And I'm using this picket fence to create some negative space between the fence posts. Well, this is fun. Again, using my walk. So I find this little set for kids in front of a building that's unfortunately closed due to the virus. It's a florist shop but I can walk around, maybe just work on getting one particular chair and getting the shadows or even moving this way. And I think I like that. I like the negative space. I like the shadows. That would be my picture. Before it gets too noisy, I just love seeing these American flags blowing in the breeze with the sky behind them. 
And actually the post that it's on creates some interesting negative space too. So rule of thirds works for me. Any of you that know me know I love dogs. So on my walk, I couldn't resist finding this picture of a Great Dane with a bone cut out for an ad for a building. The key is to walk around to see what angle I like best and then figure out where I'm going to take my picture using that rule of thirds. And actually, maybe this one's better. Moving it down a little bit, always giving the dog space to breathe where he's headed. And there's my picture. Food can also be a simple pleasure. For any of you that know me, you know I love my iced coffee and these muffins from the local coffee shop are good. And they're finally open, so I was able to get some delivered. Anyway, food photography has taken on a life of its own. But you can always try moving around, getting simple views. Maybe that warm cup of coffee in the morning. Um, maybe breakfast sandwich. Maybe the cup of tea that's relaxing with some biscuits. Those are simple pleasures. And right now I have this perfectly lined up. I'm just going to straighten my camera a little bit. Move back so I've got everything in it. And again, in Photoshop, I'll take out some of the unwanted extras. But there I have my simple pleasure of a muffin and some iced coffee. Collections are another way to get a sense of simple pleasures. We all put things around our house that simply mean something special to us and we enjoy looking at. It might be a collection of old family photos like what I'm looking at here. But the decision is what part to take a picture when you're taking a picture of a picture. Look for maybe an interesting grouping. Oh, now I got myself in the picture, which we don't. We all have things around our house that are interesting groupings that we find simple pleasure in looking at. They might be old family photos. The key is to move around until you're not getting some kind of strange reflection and find the picture of the picture that you want to take the picture of. So maybe I would just zoom in on just these items here. I have some dogs in the background. I've got another dog here, picture of my grandfather. These pictures mean something to me. That might be a good rule of thirds picture. Or I can move over this way and back up and come down to get this reflection out of the way a little bit. There we go. And maybe take a picture this way of these pictures. That might work too. So look at groupings of photographs that you have around the house. You have them there because they mean something to you and hopefully they bring you pleasure. Collections are another way to find ideas for simple pleasures. As you can see here, I have a really eclectic taste in music, and these are some samples of my old albums. I like everything personally from musicals to Queen, classic rap, Billy Joel, of course, Maynard Ferguson. I was in jazz band in college and love the swing era and the jazz and the sounds of that. So I have some samples here, but how do we make this an interesting picture? Again, parts and pieces. You don't have to show every part of everything. Maybe if I just go right here and then zoom in, I've got some interesting, I'm making interesting shapes. We're not necessarily trying to document as much as we are just show the idea. So the red from the Annie is enough without having the Annie part of the album. Or I could swing this way and come back up a little bit and over and get an idea like this. So we're almost creating abstracts with the shape of the albums. Finding collections you have are another way to get simple pleasures and to show ideas for the rule of thirds. Again, this one is two thirds positive, one third negative space. Not all photography is created just in the camera. So today you're going to be seeing me work on my laptop just to give you an example of what we can do with Photoshop some basics because Photoshop is a pretty intense program. As my photographers can tell you, there's always something new to learn. But today I'm just gonna show you how the rule of thirds work and my computer screen is going to be an excellent example on understanding the principles of the rule of thirds and also how to incorporate some basic editing to make any photo look better so that your simple pleasures bring you even more pleasure as a photo. Keep in mind with the rule of thirds, if you've ever played tic-tac-toe, this is gonna look familiar to you. Stop. And you're probably saying, okay, that's just a blue screen, but I wanted to show you what the rule of thirds was. If I click on what we use as a cropping tool and then click in my blue frame of nothing, I, this makes it easy to understand the rule of thirds. 
The rule of thirds simply means that any area is divided into three vertical spaces and three horizontal spaces, as you can see from here. The principle of the rule of thirds is that any six of these spaces contains your subject and any three contain negative space, visual rest, whatever you want to call it. Now, those things don't have to be lined up proportionally like this, like we would have something in this area and then nothing here. It's more a matter of proportions. So if something touches this square, this square, this square, maybe part of this one, part of this one, part of this one, that whole area could be determined to be the two thirds object, one third negative space. Same thing if you wanted to do it in reverse, you might just have maybe an apple or a cup of coffee down here touching maybe these three squares for the most part, and the rest is negative space. It could be background, window, whatever it might be. But I wanted to show you basically what that rule of thirds would look like. So now if we go to take that idea as and well, we'll try it. Let's see if well, we can find, there we are. <laughs> there we are. This is the example I showed you in the camera when we were looking at the video. There's the hydrangeas with the door and there's some extraneous things. So I'm gonna show you some basic Photoshop things that'll help get rid of some stuff like this, this light switch. Any of you that know Sonia Wicklund, she's a master of getting rid of extraneous noise. So we'll get to see that. When I click on my cropper and then click on my picture, this is going to tell me where my rule of thirds is. And I can see right now, this is pretty well centered and I don't want that. If I bring this down, notice it's changing the proportion of the rule of thirds so I can get rid of some things and make this two thirds object one third background. So my object is now taking up most of the space and even though the vase is pretty much centered, it's more on the bottom two thirds and the top. So I'm going to double click. Now, for those of you who have never done Photoshop, this is fun. This is like the magic. So all we have to do is take a tool called the um, lasso tool because it looks like a lasso and go up to edit and go to fill and go to content aware and say, okay. And pretty much my table is now disappear. I've just, I've lost that little piece of placemat. So that's exactly what I want to do. So it's fill content aware and edit. And I got that darker and that's pretty much what I would want. I can do the same thing here with this little bit of computer, but I think you get the idea. I do want to keep moving on. This isn't a whole Photoshop lesson, but Photoshop also has a little band-aid tool that can help me get rid of these little crumbs down here just by coloring in. And you can do this when we get to the lesson on photo restoration, how to fix photos that have dings and cracks and things like that in it. But all in all, we're looking at the rule of thirds and I'm going to click on this again. And I can see now that I have one, two, three, definitely four, and then a little bit of five and a little bit of six. So these all together equal my two thirds subject one third negative space, which is the areas around it. And then these little bits on the inside. When I'm finished with that, I can just hit this top tool and it's cropped it to where I want it. And now I have a picture pretty much the way I would like it to be. I'm going to show you some other simple pleasure ideas. I love Memorial Day. I find these pictures to be pretty interesting, but this gentleman is pretty much centered right in the middle. I've got equal distance here. If I put the cropper on, I've got one full square here and one full square here. If you're taking pictures of people using the rule of thirds and people could be a pleasure, could be a spouse, a friend, a neighbor, you always want to fix your rule of thirds so that the person is not smack dab in the middle, it makes them look like a bullseye and that's not what we want. So if I move this over here, now I have more space on this side. Now I have like almost one and a half squares and less than one square here. Double click, already that's better because we always want more room where a person is looking so that they have basically um, air or space between them. And then of course, if I wanna do the same thing here, I could get rid of this shoulder. It doesn't really bother me too much. Um, yeah, I just like the idea of doing that kind of a crop. So that's another example of the rule of thirds with people. 
rule of thirds in landscapes works the same way. And I wanted to show you this one because this one's pretty much done as is. I'm not going to change it. I had already cropped it, but I wanted to show you what negative space rule of thirds is or reverse rule of thirds. Here's my object. It's the boats in the water and my landscape, the background, the horizon line, the sunset, the water all becomes negative space because here's the subject. My subject is in one, two, and then enough of parts of three to equal the whole one third, but most of this is negative space. So this photo is an example of reverse rule of thirds or where there's two thirds negative space and one third object. The last one I wanted to show you is just something fun. This is a spider web taken at night and it's all, it was off of Lake Geneva in Wisconsin. So it's not here at my house right now. I'd be scared. But I all thought this almost looks like a constellation of beetles and bugs or whatever and the way it was being illuminated from the street light. But boy, this cornice is really getting in the way. It is a good example of negative space because nothing screams negative like just a black background. However, this gets in the way of you seeing this. So I took the liberty of editing it and now we have this which is a perfect example of two thirds object, one third negative space. And we've also got a nice diagonal. Now how I did that, first I opened the picture, then I cropped it. I used that lasso tool. I deselected it because it didn't lasso what I wanted. Then I lassoed correctly around the whole thing, selected fill like we did content aware, but that made the whole thing just black. So I deselected that, darkened it a little bit, a little bit more. And then I used another favorite of our Photoshop class members, the patch tool, where I selected an area and then filled it in with something from somewhere else, deselected, patched in something from somewhere else, deselected, and then I saved my image. And there you go. So if you decide to come down to the photo room, these are some simple examples of what the rule of thirds can be. And if I click in here and show you, bam, there we have it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six full solid areas of rule of thirds, two thirds object, one third negative space. And we've even got that nice diagonal that helps make an interesting picture. That's a good way to show how Photoshop can be used to make the rule of thirds work for a photo, even when it's not necessarily working for you from the very beginning. I hope that helps you see what we do in the Photoshop aspect of the photography classes. There's some simple things, and if you're just a beginner starting out, don't worry, we go slow and hopefully give you a lot of chances to practice. For those of you who are veterans using Photoshop at home already or down in the photo lab in the advanced photo class, this was hopefully just a little refresher of things that we go over in our Zoom classes every Tuesday or Wednesday. But I wanted you to understand a little bit more about how rule of thirds starts in the camera, but can also be used in Photoshop to fix things that might not have been perfect the first time around. I hope that gave you some ideas for things you might want to try to photograph and maybe explain that pesky term that you've heard artists use all the time called the rule of thirds. Of course, rules are always meant to be broken and there are many artists that have used the rule of thirds or the lack thereof to their advantage, but it's just something to try. And at least it'll help explain what that little grid is that shows up on your phone every time you're taking a photograph or a video. Till next week, Vincent Hall, I hope you stay safe, stay well, and I will see you soon.